So congratulations on this. Uh, I was a fan of your your uh, earlier work with the the Queen of Hollywood Boulevard. That was an amazing film. So I couldn't wait to watch this. Oh, awesome. Uh, it caught me off guard. I thought I was going to be a uh, very, uh, I guess, cheesy, fun movie. Instead, it was it was full of action. It was very in. It had a lot of depth to it. It had. It's a complex story. Uh, why did you choose to tell this story? What 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 captivated you about this? Well, first of all, it's un- unbelievable. You saw Queen. That's very cool. Um, I, I'm obviously very proud of that film. Um, well, I just started writing it when during lockdown, when the theater started closing down, and just kind of wanted to make something that you know was not only kind of about what I imagine people were going through to try to save their small businesses and things of that nature, but also about just kind of the action and the cult films that I grew up loving. Um, I wanted to make something that was also fun, even though, you know, hoping that it had a subtext that we could, you know, people would have things to discuss, but also would go on a ride and kind of like a fever dream in this, in a, in a time in this person's life. Uh I've always been searching for a theater much like the one you portray in this film, something where the owner knows so much about the movies that he's playing and there that, that discussion with the fans and the, the theater, the owner is happening all the time. Uh, how did you come up with, uh, how did you start building this character up? Because uh, Taron Tower did such an amazing job. What kind of uh, direction did you give him? Uh, what discussion did you guys have in order to create this very amazing character? I mean, I think Terrence kind of looks at what's on the page and then he makes it his own. And in that case, that's what this was. I mean, we talked about movies and that type of stuff, but he really, I think he saw more of who the character was beyond just their love of film. The love of film was kind of the surface for him. And then it was more about a guy who was standing up for what he believed in. And I think that was really more of Terrence's entry point and entryway into it than, and he brought a very much like an emotional grounding to the character. Um, for me, yeah, I mean, I had a guy that like loved the movies because the movies gave him an identity. And clearly this is someone that probably outside of his world doesn't really feel at one with the, the outside world. So this is kind of his safe space and this is where he feels he can be himself. Definitely. And you have such an amazing cast. Uh, how did, how were you able to get these people to come in and, you know, put their, the best effort they could into such a film? Uh, you know, you have, uh, what's his name? Ah, Lungridge, who, who does an amazing job in this film as well. And he plays such a, such a fun character, I would say. Um, yeah, we just, I, it was written for him originally and we just, um, went out to him and he was super engaging with it and brought his whole take on it, making him eccentric and fun. He wanted him to kind of be like Ozzy Osbourne. That was kind of his take on the character, this like a uh, reclusive Ozzy Osbourne. And we just, you know, uh, dipped into that and leaned into it and had a lot of fun together with the character. Definitely. And all, all these characters are very unique. They, they have their, their own, their, their own, persona that they bring to the to this movie um for the rest of the supporting cast you know um how did you find them because they seem to have put a lot into this film as well a lot of them are people that i have personal relationships with or have worked in the past john Sklaroth, um and the two bad guys michael ferguson john's been in all my movies amanda rigetti um was a friend of a friend and she's really awesome Clemmy Dugdale um, is a good, great actress and she was great in it and kind of plays like the femme fatale throughout all of those movies within the movie. So everyone just kind of came together in their own organic way. We tried to keep it very um, relationship based. Didn't want to get into the minutia of like industry nonsense. Definitely. And uh, choosing swords for, for some of these fights, well, you know what made you want to go into that direction instead of giving them guns like you you usually would get in more modern movies um i mean it's a really interesting point actually i actually wanted to stay away from guns as much as possible a i think uh i like i mean he uses a fake gun throughout it but i like um i think that 
um, we have a pretty messed up relationship with guns uh, in our country and especially in a place like a movie theater. So, and I also just like swords. I mean, they're more fun. Like I got the sword right here. Like it's like, it's more fun to me, swords and axes and all that type of stuff. They just, uh, we've seen guns. They, we know what they do and, you know, give the guys, the bad guys machetes. It makes them a little more lighthearted, a little less threatening mm-hmm. in a way. Cause I didn't want it to feel like, you know, some sort of terrorist attack on the theater. Um, I wanted it to be fun and, and kind of imitate what was going on in the movies, within the movies in real life. Talking about those uh, classic cult movies that you, that you put in there. Uh, where did the inspiration for those come from? Because those seem like I would want to watch these if, if they were real. Like, where did the idea for those come from? Um, I just grew up watching all these crazy movies, and I kind of wrote them from my memory of what I liked about them. So, you know, Necropolis, the one Necropolis, the first one, is based off of uh, Neon City with Michael Ironside. And then, you know, uh, Cyber Cartel is kind of like a nemesis uh johnny mnemonic type of vibe and um you know malibu massacre is kind of like uh one of the like malibu bay um hard ticket to hawaii type you know so it's all just kind of things that i like and getting to play around with them and my own versions of them uh going back to the queen of hollywood boulevard to this these are completely uh different movies uh how do you choose your style? How, how do you choose what you want to do next? Well, I mean, but they're basically the same story. That's the thing is like, they're both about someone that feels like they have their little slice of the American dream and their pie and it's someone's trying to take it from them. So like, I think that's what a lot of my films is about is about ownership and what that means. And yeah, I mean, this is definitely a step in a different direction. I want it to be a little more light, a little more accessible. Um, But I think there's actually still a lot of similarities in their own way about what the characters are fighting for and whether they're fighting for something that's really important to them. It might not be important to other people, but to them, it's what their whole life is wrapped into. Definitely. Well, congratulations on this. Uh, The movie is definitely a very high quality movie. It will hopefully get a good following because uh, people like me who, who love cult classics don't really usually see these types of films being made. So thank you very much for this. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you as well. That means a lot. That's awesome to hear. So.